Berserk, Volume 8, Chapters 43 the 52. Just finished reading it, and a lot happened in this volume. Uh, I was surprised. And I mean, we're talking like, what, 11 chapters or so in one volume. So let me try to get into this and actually remember everything that happened and what I want to talk about. But the ending of this volume leaves off with Guts leaving the Band of the Hawk, who was going to become the White Phoenix Knights under the White Phoenix himself. Griffith, because of their valor and their success and victory at the Battle of Doldry. Uh, so basically, the Battle of Doldry as well concluded in this volume. The first two chapters finish the Battle of Doldry, and Griffith basically kills that dude who, you know, he had sex with way back in the day, and he even tells him, I have no feelings for you. Not, you know, resent, endearment, nothing. You were simply a tool. I used you. And this is the first time we've heard Griffith actually talk this way to somebody. And I really enjoyed that. And due to their success and their victory at the Battle of Doldry, the king announces at their celebration, the moment of glory is the name of the chapter, that he is going to be knighting all the commanders in the Band of the Hawk, and like I said, changing their name with the highest uh, noble rank in the military, which is white. So they're going to be called the White Phoenix Knights. But something happens in this volume that, calls, that causes this, uh, this knighting to be postponed. Um, and it all happens in the same night of the celebration for the Band of the Hawk's success at the Battle of Doldry. And what this is, is we see in a, in a chapter that the Queen, along with that Minister False Guy and a few other of the conservatives, uh, conservative ministers, are planning to kill Griffith. And they're going to poison him. But as this plan's going on, Minister False gets a letter, and we find out at the end, you know, after everything's said and done, what this letter was. You know, Griffith takes a, a fucking sip, uh, he drinks the, you know, the Golden Goblet with the poison in it, he get, passes out, everybody's scared, and then, you know, the Queen and Minister Foss and whoever else, you know, the conservative ministers are all celebrating. But then all of a sudden a fire breaks out in the room or in the building they're in. And we find out this was all Griffith's plan. You know, once again, Griffith on top of things. And what he did was he kidnapped Minister Foss's daughter, Elise, and, call, and made him switch the poison with something else that would just knock him out for a little bit and make him seem like he was dead. And he actually had Minister Foss betray his own comrades. The people that he conspired with against Griffith, he betrayed them for his daughter and killed the Queen and killed those conservative ministers. Now, we find out as well that the Queen is actually the second Queen for the King. Um, the one he truly loved, the only woman he could love, passed away. And I'm assuming that's Charlotte's mother as well. And then we also find out that uh, the only reason why the Queen wants to kill Griffith is because uh, she was having an affair with uh, Julius, if you remember, and she believes that Griffith is the one that killed Julius and the donut, Adonis. So she wants revenge on Griffith, and basically, at first, she didn't think it was love, but she ended up saying that she loved Julius and she wants revenge. This isn't her acting as the Queen, it's her acting as a woman who wants revenge for her love, her lover. But whatever, she got her she got her own, and now Griffith doesn't have anybody really in the kingdom who is trying to, uh, you know, haunt his promotions and his progress towards his dream. There's no more conservative ministers. The queen, who is severely against him, is no longer there. And Minister Foss is pretty much on his side now. Um, you know, Griffith says we should be amicable towards each other now. Uh, we see who Griffith actually hired to do this, which it seemed like a band of, like, assassins or whatever, and he even cut those loose ties. He ended those loose ties by having Guts kill them, Guts killing the person that poisoned him, apparently, so he fucking, like, tied up all these loose ends, and he's on top now, but then... A month later, Guts decides to leave, and Griffith ain't having that. We see a little bit of Griffith's dirty side. You know, he told Guts he doesn't want them to see his dirty side, but the way he acts towards Guts, Guts in this moment sort of shows how he is. And Casca, if you remember, 
when they when he first acquired guts, Casca didn't give it didn't bat an eyelash. She was like, whatever. She did, did wouldn't even care if you know a comrade was hurt if it had to do with Griffith. But now that you know Griffith and Guts are going to have a sword fight to determine if he stays or not, just like how they had a sword fight for him to join uh, the Band of the Hawk. She seems worried. She tries to stop it. Pippin, Judo, Judo, and everybody else stops her. Quirkus included. And she, you know, Judo realizes that she's changed and wonders if she actually notices that she changed as well. And the battle begins. And before the battle begins, Quirkus, a fucking asshole, fucking straight asshole, Quirkus, man. You guys know I do not like this motherfucker. He talks shit to guts. He's like, since you're leaving, I hated you from the moment I met you, pal. This, that, and the other thing, talking shit on him. And guts is just like, heh. And then Quirkus basically says, I know why I hate you. It's that stone cold look. Like, you don't care. Like, you're just walking a path of suffering. And we actually do learn a little bit about Quirkus as well, that he apparently ran a band of thieves that only had 10 people including himself in the band of thieves because judo and guts before this all happens before guts tries to leave uh he tells guts to come talk to him and judo explains you know everything about griffith a few things about corcus you know they talk about dreams and everything and i thought that was really well done you know basically saying you know, everybody has dreams, but not everybody pursues them. You know, is it worth it? He goes, don't get me wrong. I'm satisfied with the position I'm in right now, but I had a dream at one point too. You know, he goes, I'm a mass, you know, I'm a uh, jack of all trades, but I've never mastered anything, you know. So it was really nice seeing a little bit more of judo, seeing, learning a little bit about Quirkus's past, and then seeing Guts and Griffith actually battle to, to, to see if Guts leaves or not. Griffith telling him, I told you, you belong to me. If you want to leave, you need to rest my sword. And, uh, you know, we actually see inner uh, monologue from Griffith deciding what he should do against Guts, how he should defeat Guts, recognizing that Guts has become a lot stronger, you know, saying he's a lot stronger than he used to be, a lot faster. How am I going to do this? I don't think my blade can take more than two or three strikes from his blade. And when it was all said and done, Guts actually, his blade actually couldn't take even one strike from Guts' uh, bigger sword. And he breaks, you know, Griffith's sword and lays his sword down on Griffith's shoulder, but stops it. And then uh, he basically just stands up and says, take care. Leaving Griffith broken and for the first time probably, uh, that at least what we've seen, broken and, you know, not sure what he should do. You know, kind of in the like, disbelief that he actually lost, that he actually lost something that he held so dearly that he won it, and he won in the past. So it was really good to see that as well. And then at the end, while Guts is walking away, he says something along the lines that, you know, your your goal is far off in the distance. You know, you will stand up, and you will start walking again very soon. Basically saying, like, just because I left, you're not done, Griffith. You can do this without me. I know you can. And obviously, like I said in my earlier reviews, Guts wants to leave to find his own dream, to attain his own something. And, you know, Corcus scoffs at this, says this is it's bullshit, that's dumb, whatever. But uh, Guts is, he, he's content in what he's trying to do. His resolve is solid, and he wants to stand beside Griffith and not under him. Griffith is the only person Guts cannot stand looking down at him, and he wants to be an equal with him. So he has to go off and find his own thing, win his own thing with his own skill and his own power and his own, you know, with his own hands. And I really respect that of the character. You know, he has everything dangling in front of him, knighthood, uh, living in the castle, all this different stuff, all these awesome, like, rewards for everything he's done with the Band of the Hawk. And he says, this is nothing. This is only because I'm with Griffith. I want to go out on my own, even if it's, you know, some vague thing. I don't know what it's going to be. I want to win something on my own so I can be an equal. So I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed the philosophy that was in this in, in this volume uh, about dreams, you know, everything, man. Just uh, the, the characterization of Guts even more, the characterization of Judo, learning about him, you know, the, the, philosoph the philosophical talk between Judo and Guts was just great. The battle with Guts versus... Uh, Griffith at the end, uh, finally guts abing, abling to uh, being able to one up Griffith finally, and actually seeing Griffith broken and in disbelief for the very first time. Uh, you know Griffith playing the game of Thrones in this chapter was amazing. In this volume was amazing. Volume eight, really enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys enjoyed the chapters that I talked about. My thoughts on this. Um, oh, and also Zod. That shit was awesome in the battle for Doldry. Zod throwing down his weapon and 
immediately guts taking off uh, Boscone's head and the horse's head as well. That shit was intense. And I kind of wonder if that's because coupled with gut strength maybe zod's sword is a it may be something like strong or unique or something magical i don't know because he actually throws it down at one point and i don't know if zod ever goes to recover his blade or not maybe it was just really really uh well crafted i don't know but that scene was really really nice and i'm glad that we've seen more of zod and that tells me that zod is going to be in this uh this series even more even though we haven't seen very much of him but uh, let me know your thoughts on my thoughts, guys. Like the video if you feel I deserve it. Subscribe if you want to see more Berserk volume reviews. And uh, please do not use ad blocking when you watch my videos if you want to support me 100%. And I urge you to do the same for anybody that you, you want to support 100% on YouTube, on Twitch TV, live streamers, whatever. We make our living, our money, our little bit of chump change, whatever you want to say, depending on the person's situation, by ad revenue. But uh, thanks for watching my review slash my thoughts on chapter, uh, volume 8 of Berserk. Loving it. I'll catch you in the next v Berserk volume review. Peace, my mans.